just wait till I get to number one. You're gonna die. So, oh, he doesn't look that enthusiastic. So today we're going to discuss some personality traits that differ between Americans and Europeans. It's going to be less opinion based today and more fact based. I have done the research, but I will not be citing all of my sources because that's tedious and makes me not want to do the video, it makes me feel like I'm doing a thesis. So you called my thesis a fat sack of barf? A lot of stuff came from the Global Attitudes survey though, and then other things just came from Googling. You can also Google, feel free. As ever, when I make these lists, people go, well, I'm American and I don't do this, or I'm European and I don't do this. That's okay. You are a special individual snowflake and you are as unique as the day is long. She didn't mean snowflake in the political way. She meant it in the old school way. So, you know, you're different and well done you. But for the rest of us, we're all just sheeple. But no, some things I don't fit into as European, but it's okay, it's just general. So yeah, let's just have a look today at things that separate us. I like to focus on things that bring us together, but things that separate us are just freaking interesting, right? Okay, first up, listen to this statement. Success in life is pretty much determined by forces outside of our control. Do you agree or disagree? Starting now. Ding, ding, ding. If you agreed with the above statement, you are probably European. If you disagreed and believe that destiny is in your own control, then you are probably American. Americans apparently mostly believe that they control their own destiny, while Europeans often believe that there are forces outside of their control which control their destiny. Control, control, control. There was, however, one deviation in this poll, and that was the United Kingdom, who also believed that their destiny was within their own control. A median of 53% in Western Europe and 58% in Central and Eastern Europe said this, but only 31% of Americans believed that success in life is pretty much determined by forces outside of our control. Americans are also more likely to believe that if an individual works hard, they will find success, which is quite nice, really. 73% of Americans said hard work is vital to success, whereas only 35% of Europeans believed this to be the case. They brought in factors like nepotism and luck. I find this interesting because the idea of the American dream is so tied up with this ideology. I have found my own audience here on YouTube to be largely American and Canadian, and that's something that I enjoy as an individual that the more work I put into YouTube, the more I get out of it. Speaking of which, if you could like, share, comment, and subscribe, all of those things are free, and they help me out a bunch. Help me help you. Help me help you. I do think that there is more of a fate, destiny kind of outlook on things in Europe, but there has been a huge increase in the last decade in motivational speakers. Every city in Europe is now popping up life coaches by the dozen. So I would be really interested in a very, very up-to-date poll. That poll is dated 2019, so I would be super interested in hearing if anything has changed in recent years. The next big difference in who we are as Europeans or Americans is our work-life balance. You've probably heard this one before. Americans live to work, Europeans work to live. A recent survey has stated that Europeans work up to 25% fewer hours annually compared to those working in the USA. For Americans, that's 258 hours extra per year or an hour per day extra work. Some reasons for this have been attributed to the fact that most European countries have it stated as law that a person has to be entitled to a certain amount of work days per year, a certain amount of time off. Whereas in the USA, as I understand it, a lot of things come down to company policy. And you guys have explained to me before in the comments that you will be allowed a certain amount of time off depending on your contract. However, I would question, and maybe you can answer this in the comments, how much do you think 
law versus policy affects whether you take those days or not. Like I would think there's a difference between an employer being told you have to give this worker days off and an employer saying you're entitled to these days off and then you realize they're short staffed or you feel obliged to do extra hours. You know, company culture is a big thing. Like I would stay longer at the end of a working day if everybody else was staying longer. Do you know what I mean? Curious about that, let me know in comments. Also involved in that, American companies are more inclined to incentivize workers to want to stay in the office. So they will add things like gyms, they'll add pool tables, anything like that to incentivize workers to come in and go to work more. In a survey of European companies polled, 85% of workers said that they didn't care what you did to make them come into the office when they didn't need to be, they were going home. I would say in Europe, attitudes to work-life balance vary hugely from country to country. For example, I find in Ireland, a lot of people will be inclined to take their work home with them at the end of the day. Whereas in Spain, it's very much you turn off your work day at the end of the day. They also have their siesta in the middle of the day. The life balance is extremely important. Also, interestingly, a lot of American companies post pandemic are looking into attracting more of a European viewpoint on working hours. They are allowing a lot more people work from home and digital nomads. And I think that can only be a good thing, right? But let me know what you think. If you get the work done and you're at home, what difference does it make, you know? Office culture, nobody cares, Chad. Actually, your boss's name would be like Tom or Bob or Roger. The next thing is one that I have talked about in relation to my feeling about America versus Ireland a lot of times, and it's happiness for other people. This one is going to be interesting when we look at the next point about liberty, but just on this point, a lot of American people tend to be happier for others' success than their European counterparts who find themselves envying the success. In Ireland, we have a word called begrudgery. It's the only place that word has a word. And it means that when somebody does well, you might begrudge them for it. As in you are somewhat envious or you think the person is getting notions. The person is getting a little too high for their station. You want the person not to get too big for their boots. In America, in contrast, it has been said that people are motivated by the success of others. Again, I think this one's subjective depending on who you ask. A lot of Europeans would feel the same way, but you know, polls. Forgot to say at the beginning of this, there is such a thing as a bad poll and we'll see that coming up soon in my opinion. Okay, so as I mentioned, the next one is liberty. Liberty, justice, and freedom for all. It's funny how I can quote the American thing, but I can't do the Irish one. Well, maybe not according to how you guys actually feel about liberty. And this is one that I do feel is a bit of a bad poll. So according to this poll, they were asked, which was more important? your personal life goals without interference or ensuring nobody in society is in need. Apparently nearly six in 10 people in the USA, that's 58% believe the former, whereas the majority in all European nations polled said the latter. And here's where I feel this might be a bad poll. Do those two things need to be mutually exclusive? Whenever I've pondered this topic before, I've had American people in comments say that I have a socialist European outlook. And I wanted to look into this a little bit more from, you know, a fact standpoint. Good burn, that was fun. Apparently socialism is said to be a left-wing thing in the United States of America. So I Googled it and came up with this answer. All European countries have capitalist market economies. Countries might have strong welfare policies, but that doesn't make them socialist, so. Also, I, I do find it strange that both sides of politics wouldn't want to look out for both the individual and society at the same time. Maybe I'm being idealistic, but surely we could ensure or try to ensure as any party, politically speaking, that you have people's basic needs met while allowing others to elevate themselves if they so choose through the hard work thing that we talked about earlier, no? Like if some people have their basic needs met and flourish from there, 
fine. Like they all have the same starting point. But I'm probably being idealistic. This is why I didn't go into politics because I just, I find it hard to see why that's a political question. Like surely everybody should have that objective. Leave the business talk to the men. Hmm. I don't know. Gotta nuke something. I think if everybody has their basic needs met, then surely it's okay if some people are super duper mega rich. My dad read me that book Animal Farm when I was a kid and I just thought it was about really funny animals, but now I'm kind of pondering that thing about all animals are equal and some are more equal than others. I really gotta go back and read that one. Anyway, I'm not a politician, so I really need to stop having my brain hurt thinking about this. The next thing is Americans are more likely to value their friendships as highly, if not higher, than their family relationships. I think this has a lot to do with distance. People in America are so spread out. You can leave your family home at 18, which I'm told is like quite common because people go to university in different states. Whereas in Europe, it's not uncommon for people to live in their 20s and even 30s in the family home. Obviously, most American people tend to be seen as being friendly to strangers, whereas countries in France and Italy, when polled, found that they really didn't care what strangers thought of them much at all. Does that surprise you? No. That was my French accent. Speaking of strangers, the sharing of personal information. That's what's next. When polled, Europeans were far more likely to separate private information from public information. Often, Americans are accused of oversharing by Europeans, whereas they would argue, potentially, that they feel they're just more open. It's all about spin, right? Depends what way you look at it. Good thing or bad thing. When asked a series of questions ranging from religious ideology to relationship status and health status, Europeans were more likely to classify a question as inappropriate depending on who was asking it. I find that really interesting. I'm quite a private person myself. Um, so yeah, I've never found that to be a problem with American people though. People, as I have found from personal experience, do tend to respect your privacy. Although I do find Americans telling you more about what I would potentially deem a personal private thing or a thing that I would count as private more openly. I don't think there's anything wrong with that though. Um, I just kind of think that's one of those things individually, it's up to you, but interesting that it's a cultural thing. Can you stop snoring please? I'm trying to do a video. Thank you. Next up, this one will not come as a surprise to you. Americans say what they mean. They are forthright compared to their European counterparts. Apparently, most countries in Europe value social etiquette more highly than saying what they mean in the moment. I will pose to you the restaurant analogy. If you're in an American restaurant, it is not uncommon for somebody to send a course back if they don't like it or when they're asked. They'll say, oh, I didn't like this. And that's seen as like socially acceptable, very normal. Whereas in Europe, we favor more so, uh, yes, everything was fine, even if it wasn't fine. Unless something is actually killing you, we would rather die than complain. That's not to say I haven't complained in restaurants and things I have done, but it's just not, it's not as regular and run of the mill as it would be in America. Now you do tend to get more exactly what you want in America as a result, um, but that's just cultural norms again. Next up, when it comes to clothing, this one will come as not a shocker to most of you. Americans believe in comfort over image. I think this one is most easy to see when you're walking around a city. You'll see a lot of American people in comfy clothing, tracksuits, t-shirts, baggy pants. Whereas when you're in a European city in France or Spain or Italy or Germany, you will see people a little bit more dressed up. Especially in Spain, it's really, really common to see the majority of women walking around in high heels. I would rather no, sometimes I'll wear high heels if I'm really trying to look nice, but most of the time, comfy shoes for me. This one was taken by Fashion University, and they said that 85% of Americans polled said they believed in comfort over image, whereas 58% of Europeans said they believed in image over comfort. That is a big jump. That is a big difference. Personally, give me a comfy jumper any day. Next up, it's our attitudes to the government. And this one is where actually 
there are some big similarities. American and Western European publics are similarly divided over whether people benefit from how the government is run and share similar disdain for elected officials. Now here is the question that was posed. Do you believe the way the state is run is for the benefit of all people or for those in power? Both Western Europe and Americans were really similar. A median of 44% agreed that the state is run for the benefit of all, which is closely mirrored by 46% of Americans. And here is where there was a big contrast. Eastern Europeans, when polled, with the same question, 65% of the population believed that the government were looking out for the best for the people. I don't know which is scarier. I'd like to believe that, but I don't. I don't really believe that they want the best for us. If it happens to coincide with what they want to do to better themselves, I think they'll do it. But I don't think that they're looking out for us of all, unfortunately. And the number one thing may or may not come as a shock to you. Europeans are much more likely to cheat than their American counterparts. Fidelity, when polled, was much more highly valued in the United States of America than it is in most nations in Europe. People were asked, do you believe married people having an affair is morally unacceptable? 84% of people from America said Yes, it is completely unacceptable. And coming close enough after that was Greece at 79%. At 76% was the United Kingdom and from there the numbers fall hugely. All the way down to guess, guess where the most infidelity happens in the world. You'll guess it, it's not hard to guess. France. Yeah, France, you guessed it. I'm guessing you guessed it. Only 47% of French people said married people having an affair is morally unacceptable. That's wild. Don't marry a French person. I'm only kidding. Like there are still 47% of people that agree with the statement. So, you know, like I said, each person is an individual thing, unique in every way. Anyway, I found some of those statistics super freaking interesting. Let me know below your thoughts and opinions on all of them. Shout out today to a couple of very special people. Our first shout out is a seasonal one from the lovely Ricky Carey. He wants to shout out all around the world, adding lots of Christmas lights, trees, and decorations to make the world a festive place to celebrate. Merry Christmas from Ricky. Thank you so much, Ricky. We hope your Christmas is filled with joy. Next up, the wonderful Brian Ediger wants to shout out teachers and students as the semester wraps up. He says we've made it through, time for a short break, then back to the grindstone, except for those graduating. Congratulations to them. Thank you so much, Brian. Season's greetings coming your way. That's it for today. See you guys on the other side. Bye. Americans mostly believe that Americans apparently, apparent, Americans apparent. So according to this poll, it questioned your personal life goals. A question. So according to this poll, it questioned people on whether they felt their personal life goals were so according to this poll, it questioned whether somebody felt with, obviously most American people are, obviously most American people tend to be seen as Curious little face. How do we get anything done with dogs around? Can you feel cute?